Good morning, Matt. How are you doing today? Good, Arrow. Good to be here with you. Dude, I got to tell you, and listeners need to understand that your books have been the most amazing tools because the first time that you and I talked in 2020, I had recently lost my brother and I used your book as a tool. And it's been such a tool because I've lost my mother and I've lost my sister. Listeners need to understand that you speak a major league truth inside We Never Die. Wow, I can tell you that was the best testimony I think I've ever gotten. Thank you so, so much. Well, you you, you have this language that, that gets inside our hearts and we begin to think, hey, hey, th- 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 it doesn't have to be over. It's the truth. And you know, from when we last spoke, it's amazing. When I, I remember coming on your show and talking about the book when it was first coming out mm-hmm. and what happened days after we spoke was incredible. All of a sudden, you know, people were writing to me and on, on Facebook and social media and uh, TikTok, and they were like, Matt, I went to go and get your book and I can't get it in stores. It's it, the tank, it's sold out. Matt, I got the last copy. I tried to get one for my mom and there was no others left. And I'm like, what is going on? What is going on? <laughs> and the next thing you know, all of a sudden, I got a call from the New York Times and saying, hey, your book sold out. You made the New York Times bestseller list. And I was like, what? And I was so excited. And then, of course, once I came down, I was like, why why did this happen and then i realized that this book really gave people the answers that they have been looking for for so long you know so many times when we lose a loved one we wonder is heaven real where are our loved ones did they make it to the other side who are they with and you know that's the reason why i wrote this book to answer all of those questions and to show people that we truly never die And you know what? Can we add pets into that, too? Because inside this studio, you're going to think I'm a freak, but I have the ashes of all my rescues. I have my brother's ashes, my mother's ashes. I mean, everything is sitting in here because I feel them more today than I did when they were with me in the present. You know, I'm so glad that you said that because I'm so glad it came from you because I tell people this all the time. And sometimes people get upset. They don't know what I'm talking about. When I say to them, listen, your loved ones are closer to you now than they even were within life. And somebody will say to me, Matt, how is that true? I lived with my husband. We were with each other every single day. And yeah, that might be true. But when your loved ones go to the other side, they get to see a totally different version of you, right? They're with you in the car when you're driving. They're with you when you go through uh, a health scare. They're with you when you go through you know, a financial crisis. No matter what you go through, they're there. Mm-hmm. But also, they're able to understand you better on the other side because they also hear your thoughts, feelings, and emotions. And I know that that sounds weird or scary or an invasion of privacy, but actually it's the opposite. Because your loved ones can hear what you're thinking and feeling, they can understand you so much better on the other side. And your loved ones feel closer to you in heaven than they even did here in this world. And I swear to you, and and I know that we've talked about this before, but I believe that they also reach out to us because on the day that my brother passed, a bird in this forest dropped a feather. I love feathers because I just love touching them. But but, I mean, from that from that moment forward, I've always received these feathers from this bird. And, and, And I just sit there and I go, thank you, Teddy. I'm here too, buddy. I'm here for you as well. It's amazing. You know, what people don't realize is that when your loved ones go to the other side, there's a transition process. And during that transition process, your loved ones actually get to choose the signs that they're going to reach you. It's part Mm -hmm. of the transition of what happens when we die. So, you know, the same way that when you lose a loved one, you're like, oh, my God, am I ever going to be able to speak to them again? Am I ever going to be able to see them again? When your loved ones pass away, they ask that same question in heaven. You know, all the souls, the first thing that they want to know when they actually transition on is if they're going to be able to reach their family and keep an eye on their family here in this world. And the minute that they're that's revealed to them that they will be able to, they start getting to work choosing signs to reach you. And with every soul, it's different. Every soul has a different way of sending a sign, coming through, communicating with you. It could be from repeating numbers, to dreams, to sensing and feeling them, to songs, to smells. I mean, they have they have us covered. There's so many ways that they can get in touch with us. We just have to be open. The book we're talking about is We Never Die, Secrets of the Afterlife, which is now in paperback. And you deal with destiny, free will, and second chances. My question is, if we never die, where's your heart on the subject of reincarnation? So I got to tell you that I've never had a soul well, I shouldn't say that. I've I have I've never had a soul that's come through and told me that they lived two lives, meaning that they've that they've reincarnated, right? Yeah, yeah. But I wouldn't know that because the thing is is that if a soul is reincarnated, there's no way for me to talk to them on the other side. Right. But 
there have been times when souls have been unreachable and I'm wondering if that's the reason why. And I'll also tell you something else. The cool part is I did do a reading that completely, completely blew my mind. And, you know, people say to me all the time, well, Matt, how is it that your mind is blown? You know, you're a psychic medium. And I'm like, you know, you deal with the dead every day. (laughs) And it's because when you're reading somebody and you experience something for the first time, you know, many times I'm in shock, just like the person getting a reading. So I'll share with you really quickly. There was this woman that I was reading for. She was this young girl and she had had a miscarriage. Um, right before her father had passed away. She was four, she was four months, excuse me, four weeks into the pregnancy when she had that miscarriage. And she was so gutted and heartbroken because she knew that her dad was not gonna be alive to meet that child. And meaning that if she were to get pregnant again, her dad would have already passed. So her dad did pass away. He did go to the other side. And then, you know, a year later, she was pregnant again and she had the baby was a successful, thank God, a successful pregnancy. And she came to me for a reading. So when she came to me for a reading right away, her dad came through and her dad had told me that she had the, had a miscarriage here in this world. And right away she started to cry. And her father had said to me, Matt, please let her know that that son was reborn. That yeah. even though she had that miscarriage because the, because the birth was um, only four weeks in, excuse me, because, because the child was only four weeks into the pregnancy, um, when that soul, that, that soul never made it fully down and that soul was, was reborn later on. And it's actually a reading that's on my YouTube page. You, if you type in Matt Frazier reincarnation reading, you can, you can watch it right on YouTube. It was the most amazing reading that I've done. I, I, I it sh- sent chills up my spine and I know it'll do the same for you. Oh, any, anything that you, that you share with us is it really does change people's lives. So this summer, what's happening is, is that Taylor Swift is planting the word karma all over radio speakers. Karma is this and karma is that. It, does she have it right so I haven't heard anything with Taylor Swift and Karma yet. I spend too much time talking to dead people <laughs> than I do the living. That's that's a, that's something that I got to work on. But what I can tell you is this: I can tell you that Karma is a real thing. But what people don't know is that there's two versions of Karma, both good and bad Karma. Yeah. So you know, everyone thinks like, "Oh, Karma is going to get them. Karma is going to get them." Well, what about when good Karma gets you? Right? You got good Karma too. When you do something good for someone, even if that person is for example, you have that that saying that goes, no good deed goes unpunished, right? You can do something good for someone and they can totally take advantage of you or it can totally backfire on you. But the thing is, is that heaven and the universe has a way of keeping track. I like to think that this is big piggy bank up in heaven filled with good <laughs> karma. And one day, one day, that good karma does come back to you when you need it the most. What did you learn from this journey? Because I mean, every when you, when you drop your thoughts onto a page, you're giving it to a world that you have not met. And then, but when you do finally get to meet them, it's like, wow, it all started with that page. I got to tell you, when I first wrote this book, I was really scared to put the information out there because I didn't know how it was going to be received. You know, the, everything that, and people even say to me, like, Matt, the things that I read about in your book, I've never read before, you know, I, I didn't know this. I didn't, I didn't understand this. You know, you can't find that information anywhere. And the truth is, is that that's the case because when I wrote this book, you know, this isn't something that you can Google research or, you know, look up. It's something that I've put together from, you know, uh, all the conversations that I've had with the spirit world. You know, when I communicate with the spirits, they'll give me little glimpses into heaven and show me little things that, you know, uh, of what heaven is like, who they're with and what they've learned. So, I put all of their stories, all of the things that I've learned through the readings here in my book, and I didn't know how it was going to be received, like I said, because a lot of it has been through firsthand experiences. And I got to tell you that I noticed that when the book got into hands of so many people, it did one thing, it brought healing. Yep. And it opens yep. many people's eyes, as you have said as well. And to me, that's the greatest reward. Man, you got to come back to this show anytime in the future, Matt. The door is always going to be open for you. Well, thank you so much. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? Thank you. You too.